punctuation for all three grades, looking at commas in sentences. Some critical points about using commas. First, commas should be used to separate ideas when they may potentially be confused. The key idea to think about with commas is that we're using them not simply because of their breath mark for someone giving a speech, but largely because if we don't put them there, we run the risk of our audience becoming confused because of how we've grouped ideas together or haven't grouped ideas together. Please remember to separate direct quotations from explanatory words. Some people call them taglines. Example being Darius said, using a comma, which is always inside the quotation marks. Okay, so if we have that comma at the end of an explanatory of these direct quotation, for example, if we have the quotation first, then we have the Darius said at the end of a sentence. We call them taglines because they're kind of attached or tagged on to whatever we use with that quotation. The comma goes inside the quotation marks. We should never have quotation marks followed by a comma immediately. Remember that with commas, you can usually remove the writing between two commas and the sentence will still work grammatically. Are there exceptions? Absolutely. But one thing to think about with commas is oftentimes we put only one when they really needed to come in a pair. Also, remember that words or phrases that begin a sentence and are followed by a comma can either be removed altogether or moved to another location in the sentence. An example, if you've already studied dependent or subordinate clauses, is that most complex sentences are dependent or subordinate clause, comma, then the independent clause. The comma is there because, quite literally, you could eat, most easily put independent clause, dependent clause, period, not on the comma in between. Uses for commas. How do we use commas? Well, in between we have eat between each item in a series of three or more items, even before the conjunction. When we're using fanboys, especially coordinating conjunctions, red, comma, white, comma, and blue. Some people consider the comma before the and optional. If you go back to my previous note about things between commas can be deleted, then we have clear that it's not just red, comma, and white and blue is another color combination. It's three things of equal value, red, white, and blue, all of equal value in that series of three colors. If it's red, comma, white, and blue, we may be looking at some kind of checkered design or striped with white and blue together. It may not necessarily be clear, so I encourage the Oxford comma, as it's sometimes called, before the conjunction in a series of three. Remember to use commas after introductory words. Things like in a series, first, second, next. Why do we have that the comma after it? Because, again, we can take it out. Mild introduction such as well, oh, even words like yes and no should be followed by a comma because, again, we can delete them from a sentence and it still makes sense grammatically. Prepositional phrases such as in the morning follow, or should be followed by a comma because they can either be removed or deleted. Infinitive phrases, participial phrases, and adverb clauses. After the movie theater is an example of such an adverb clause. When it's the start of a sentence followed by a comma, it lets the audience know when one phrase stops and the main part of the sentence begins, especially the core of the subject and verb in the independent clause. Also, now is the direct address. Drissa, please drink your milk. We have the name followed by a comma. It's there up front, in part because it's not a simple subject. The simple subject in nouns in direct address sentences, those are imperatives. The simple subject is that is the you understood, or you in parentheses, as we'd write it down. Drissa simply indicates which member of the larger audience we're speaking to, and more importantly for most people, tells them who we're not speaking to. Other uses of commas. We use commas between adjectives that modify the same noun in place of the word and. The sentence below could easily read the bright and sunny day lifted our spirits. What you'll find in a lot, of, a lot of young writers' work is that they'll use coordinate conjunctions excessively, particularly the word and. The opportunity here is to actually show your audience that you understand grammar a little more completely, in a little more, more refined sense, by knowing when you can actually delete, delete the and. If you're going to have a series of three, we won't necessarily delete the and there by putting in a comma. If you have a sentence with many commas in it, we're not going to add a comma just because we can. It might make it more confusing. In a sentence like this example, where there's no commas anyway without it, it's a great time to incorporate that. We use the commas before and after. Interrupters, phrases such as, by the way, on the other hand, that sort of thing, especially if it's between simple subject and the predicate. Great place for us to go ahead and drop interrupters in. Again, they're called interrupters because they interrupt the phrase 
They're great for voice and establishing style of a writer, but not necessary in terms of the grammar. Non-essential positives. Again, phrases that are dropped in. We have commas before and after because we can take them out. Tristan, comma, my nephew, comma, is a ball of energy. A positive, again, would take the place of saying, Tristan is my nephew, period. He is a ball of energy. Non-essential clauses. Kiss the Girl, which is one of my favorite songs, is in the movie The Little Mermaid. And yes, it really is one, one of my favorite songs. We don't need that clause in the sentence. It's between commas. Kiss the Girl is in the movie The Little Mermaid. Would have no commas. Because we have the extra clause in there, we have commas on either side of it. Some examples. Drafting the practice of following another competitor closely to resist resistance acceptable in some sports and not in others. Oi. Reckon you had commas in this one. Pause the video if you need to. Take some time to figure out where we should put some. Okay. The question is, is there any, any phrase in this sentence we can take out? Well, if I asked you what is drafting in this sentence, you have to read the sentence carefully and say that drafting is the practice of following another competitor closely to reduce resistance. If that's the case, that phrase all goes together, then we need a comma after drafting and a comma after resistance. You could also could argue later on in this chapter, you could use dashes there because you really want your audience to read that more carefully. One question becomes, do we need the comma in after acceptable? Does it even make sense? You could put a period there, yes, and sometimes we'll place a comma where a period could otherwise be if a sentence continues. But th is there a reason to pause there? If we took out the phrase between the other commas we added, drafting is acceptable in some sports and not in others. Comma shouldn't be there. We'll take that one out altogether. Danica, take down the red, white, and blue decorations on this cold, rainy day. We might first spot the red, white, and blue because use the example already. So we have a comma here after white. We keep the one after red, add the one after white. We don't add one after the third item in a series because it, it's all describing something here in this case, decorations. We don't want to separate the adjective from the nouns describing by a comma. If I asked you to find the verb in a sentence, it's going to be take. You might say take down. Down's actually an adverb, but take is the verb. Who's supposed to take? Well, Danica. Well, Danica is singular. We talked about it last previous chapter for, the, for those that just finished doing subject verb agreement. If Danica is singular, it's, it's an it or a she. Would you say she take down the red? It would be takes. In this case, we're looking at take here because it's actually the in understood view. It's a command form. Danica is a noun or address, so it should be a comma after that one. Cold, rainy, comma, day. I mentioned before, Never put a comma between an adjective and the word it's describing. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any more sense than having a comma, one comma between the subject and the verb. We don't interrupt those things because they go together. Cold and rainy both describe days, so the comma should actually be moved to after cold. Another example. In 1991, a Halloween blizzard which dropped nearly 30 inches of snow in a little over a day over the Midwest coincided with a perfect storm off the East Coast. A lot of phrases there. Start with the prepositional phrase at the beginning of the sentence. In this case, in 1991, followed by a comma there. We don't need it, but it's good information. Are there any phrases also we don't need? Well, we say the word which in the middle of the sentence, which means be there an essential or non-essential clause in the middle of the sentence. In which case we look at which. We can put a comma after blizzard and say, when do, when, when do we stop describing the blizzard? probably after the word Midwest. You could also use a problem of saying over a day over the Midwest, in which case you might need to move a phrase, but technically those are both accurate. So we have comma after 91, comma after blizzard, comma after Midwest, and that would be enough. The only thing we have to fear, declared Franklin Delano Roosevelt, is fear itself. Example of a direct quotation with taglines, declared Franklin Delano Roosevelt, is interrupting it. We can move this somewhere else in the sentence, but only if we have a comma before and after it. Remember I mentioned that commas need to go inside quotation marks. So here, at the end of the quote, we have fear, are, comma, then quotation marks. 
Franklin Delano Roosevelt, comma again, don't forget, commas always attach themselves to whatever letters before it. So it's attached to the T here in Roosevelt. And in case you missed it, we want to make sure we have the quotation marks at the end after the period. Just a bonus question there. All right, a lot to think about. Longer chapter, less than you planned on it, but there's a lot to think about with, with commas because in many cases we see them as being optional and not actually intentional. Take your time, ask plenty of questions, especially if you're not sure where something should go or why it should go there. Good hunting.